Well, we've got a Kustalin from Austin here, and we just heard some great music. I mean, Richard, out great songs, great folk music, mm -hmm. and a lot of fun. And I'm, some voices now. Oh let me yeah, tell you. yeah. We're going to talk <laughs> about those. Why don't we first introduce the instigator? Yes, <laughs> Richard. Tell us all about you. Where are you born and raised? I was born in Grand Prairie, Texas. Oh wow. So that's close to here, I guess. Yes. Yeah, very so, close. Somewhere close, yeah. Maybe in the same county we're in now. I no, don't know. No, I don't know where we are. Not quite. Okay. We're Ellis County. <laughs> I don't know you, where I am right now. We're yeah, Ellis yeah. County. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, so yes, yeah, so right up the road. And then uh, we lived in Arlington after that for a bit, my first year or so. Then I moved to Cle was in Cleveland, Ohio for like 10 years. And then in like 1972 or something, my mom, who's, my mom was from Cleveland, so she was like home, but it, we just wound up in Austin, Texas, because I think my father was down there and got her a house or something. So it was in Austin, Texas, 1972, but I moved away. I moved to Oklahoma for a while and Atlanta for a couple of years. Me too. Yeah, and Atlanta and in the early 90s. Too, and and then, uh, then, but I always came back to Austin because it's like, well, Nowhere I've been is better than Austin, so it's like that's where I'm used to. So might as well go back to where you're used to. It's the same as nothing else. like Texas. <laughs> Everybody who's lived here and leaves always seems to come back. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's well, that's yeah. what happened to me. <laughs> or they uh, wish, or, or they wish they could. You know, mm -hmm. some people are had taken away jobs and things, but right. when they retire, I saw that growing up in Denison with the Air Force Base that it hadn't been there for 30 years, but the county's half full of ex Air Force people that oh, were stationed yeah. at that base at one time. I see. You know, I see. They just like living in Texas and they like living near that lake, you know. So. And with the, and that song we did Quiet Lands with without seeming like too, you know, sentimental necessarily. It, it's sentimental the lyrics of it that way, without me necessarily having felt that when it was being written. But so, when I look back I go like, Oh, it's it's very sentimental. What got you in artist. what got you into writing? Well, um uh yeah, I, I could, well, I, okay, way back in the 70s and 80s, back when Austin was still very, still Austin. more folk, yeah. but yeah. still yeah. Austin, yeah. I played a lot of music with a lot of great older, I was only like 16, 17 back then, but played with all these people who'd been playing for years, in the 50s and 60s, folk musicians, mm -hmm. that's where I learned about that kind of music, I was much younger than they were, but they didn't care, they were grabbing a guitar, play with us, you know, so that was a lot of really great The Hours of Austin. Yeah, yeah, right, you know, down in down. music there. And we, you know, and the Armadillo was still around. And you, I mean, you're 16 years old, jamming with people in the beer garden of the Armadillo World Headquarters. It's like, yeah. this is the real thing. This you is know? cool. <laughs> yeah, this is very nice. And, uh, and you know, it's you know it's gone south from there uh, to a degree. But I have, uh, so I did a little writing then, you know, not so much, Miss Brackley. And then, you know, I wasn't writing so much. But then I went through a period where I didn't, about six to seven years ago, where I didn't play at all for like five years, I was, uh, uh, well, to put a, make it long story short, I was involved with some things which kept me from being creative and yeah. playing music. But as soon as I got out of that, uh, it something happened and I started getting these ideas and like like a lot of ideas. And all of a sudden, you know, hey, I've got enough ideas to get a band together. And then, uh, what have I said this before? But it's like, by the time the idea is sort of okay, we're gonna take a little break for a while. I had, I've written like like eight hundred, over eight hundred songs that are finished. Wow! And and kind of writing everything that could be performed. And the four albums we have out is just a really a small example of all the mm -hmm. material that I've, I've come up with in the last six or seven years. It was sort of like an avalanche and. And I still have a lot of ideas I haven't developed yet, too. But um, you know, oh, but, you will. <laughs> yeah, right, I will. Yeah, I mean, now that you know, and, I, and 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 having that happen, I was kind of like, so I changed my life where I was like, okay, I could give myself more time for myself to be creative. So I started like teaching guitar mm -hmm. and saying, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna minimize my living, you know, not have all the extra bells and whistles. I'm gonna. Become a minimalist, if you if you will, for lack of a better word. Oh, so I don't need that yeah. much much. So so I said, hey, I could I could give guitar lessons ten or twenty hours a week or however I want to, just to have enough the basic amount of money, and then all of this extra time is free for myself for writing and mm -hmm. playing music. And I decided about six years ago that's how I was gonna to stay sane. You gotta fund the whole thing yes. too. Yes. So right, you gotta, yeah, you gotta. We've you gotta all gotta fund, gotta fund our music yeah. thing. <laughs> but yeah, but you don't, but not funding it at 
at at the risk of having no time left. And right. That was right. what was most important. It's like if you can do without these things, then you don't have to invest this much of your life into getting the money for those things, so you have more time mm -hmm. to be creative. So, so Richard, how did it become a coastal, and, and where did these young ladies come from? You need yeah. to introduce them to. Well, coastal was the opposite of Metallica. See, so, <laughs> so hey, no, 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 I'm just joking. Uh, uh, well, with the original people in the family, we had to come up with a, a, a name. Obviously, well, it's, it's definitely going to be all acoustic. So we were just brainstorming some words. Acoustic this. There were a bunch of various acoustic, acoustic something, like a two-word thing. I think there's some acoustic alchemy. Some yeah, band. they're great. Too. Yeah, from yeah. Uh, the Austin area or something. and, and there, Or maybe they're not from Austin. I don't know. But that was like an example of getting the word acoustic in there. But it was being one word, and then it was L-I-N. And we said, oh, well, let's be clever and put a little Y in <laughs> instead of the I. So L-Y-N. That was a nice uh -huh. twist. So... It really, it's you know, name. brainstorming with the people I had in the band at that time. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I still ultimately came up with a word, I think, though, and signed off on it. Then, then, just like rotten pears on a tree, I started everybody thinks started I started losing people, and I've had a lot of people. It's hard to keep bands. It's it, it, it's it's hard. One thing that helps if you have one. I'm not saying it should be this way, but if you have one person who's responsible for the writing and kind of the cement for it, though, and they're always. They know what they want to have around them and mm -hmm. always go be good people. Yes. Then uh, it isn't like a band breaking up. Like if everyone left me and one fell asleep, well, it would still be me who wrote the music. I said, okay, well, I have to go find more people now. And that's yeah, just yeah. what I've always done. Yeah. Austin has too many people oh, to choose from in, in that regard. <laughs> Number of singers, but she yeah. was one of the ones who I found, Lisa, but then she had some health issues and left. And then uh, she got. I'm better now. Yeah, and right, and she had more time, and she was having to get back with and me on a And singing your ass off on yeah, that. that's yeah. right. <laughs> and uh, so Lisa was in before, she sang Harmony on the second album, mm -hmm. and then was gone, and missed the third and the fourth album, and now she's been back for about eight months. And Adelaide, and I used to have a six-piece, used to have a bass player and, and, and a percussionist, uh, some, some high-end. I joined end. the band when we had a, a large amount of people. We had our lead singer, our harmonist, who was doing the mandolin as well. Yeah, Gretchen, yeah, she and, was doing that. And uh, Kenneth, who was on the percussion. percussion. And Lynn was playing bass. And, and Lynn a, was playing bass, and so I came into a big group of people. Yeah, and what was very interesting is I, I needed a violinist, so I advertised on Craigslist. And she, had, she was going to living in a dorm on University of Texas. So I met her at the music building at UT. Met her thinking like, oh gosh, she's seventeen. You know, like this, this is never gonna work. And uh, Adelaide, you, know, you have a quality about you that's rare, and it comes across. Thank you. You really do. You, and and uh, Helen and I were talking about it during your set. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a focus too that I like, from you. Well, it's one thing I noticed about when I first met her. It's like, it you know you can never tell on a first meeting, but it quickly became apparent that, regardless of, of her young age. At the time, she's older now. But regardless of her young age, this was a, a, she was a rare, serious mm -hmm. young woman for someone her age, and a very serious musician. And I've had people in this band who, uh, you know, played with big name people, sang on Broadway, all kinds of you know credentials and stuff, who didn't have the, the dedication to stick with it as she did when she was seventeen years old, and had never probably played in a band before ever. So, so I, I've got a, th uh, this this question is. Uh, a kind of about Adelaide that is it's really about your feelings when you can see somebody climb into your lyric the way these two ladies do how does that make you feel as a songwriter that's a good question it well it makes, makes me feel proud and good it makes me proud that I was able to find people who like what we're doing that much who don't just hear a song or a line of lyrics go like eh whatever you know they seem to be behind it, yeah, it make, <laughs> makes you feel good. It makes you feel like it, that, even though it didn't seem like I have to work real hard at writing, it just sort of comes fairly easy to me. It's still though, like it, it, it's rewarding. Be, it's, it's, it's for, for, I guess, for lack of a better word, it's rewarding because they're, they're, they're filling the what, what I might not have been. I don't know. It, they're bringing life to something that's there. I mean, I would never do these songs myself. And you know, ladies, like a you, you song writer, under, right? seem to understand his lyric. Yeah, because you can right? you climb you right climb into it. Into I can it. see the the feeling when mm -hmm. the both of you are oh, yeah. singing. You feel the lyric. So individually, mm -hmm. how do you go about doing that when you take a song that you didn't write and climb into the lyric? What is your secret? Because you both do it well. 
Yeah, that's actually that's actually a very interesting question. And I, I I thought the the same one that you presented to Richard was interesting as well. We've never been asked that question. Yeah. But <laughs> for, for me, it feels like it comes naturally. Yeah. I I started the band on only playing the violin. So I would listen to the lead singer and the harmonist singing together, and I would hear the emotion that they were putting into it. And especially with the violin, I mean, you play and you emote and you mm-hmm. feel the notes that you're playing, and it, it, the feeling just comes to you. And as you learn the lyrics for a while, I mean, you've probably heard some songs before where you hear it and you know the tune, but you don't know what the lyrics were. Especially once I started singing and doing the harmony and then eventually moving into lead, and I started hearing and knowing what I was singing along with the violin. Mm-hmm. The the passion and the emotion just came with it naturally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you um are you a trained singer? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> oh. I I took um I took about seven Sorry. six six or seven years of viola of viola lessons at TCU. Right instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And w- when I came to Austin I was trying to think how am I going to keep up my music? I'm not a music major. Mm-hmm. And I went on to Craigslist and I looked at different options and I saw that there was a band looking for a violinist. So I thought, well, viola and violin, they're really close. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. just dived right in. Her we band. never even used the, the viola much except in the, in, in the yeah. studio. Yeah. But yeah, I got, I got like what she was like she was saying, and, and and what was interesting about her too is that the first show she we already were booked for uh, two whole weekends at the Sherwood Forest Celtic Festival, which is like that they do a yeah. Renaissance festival yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, they had a Celtic do one here in Waxahachie too. Though. Well, yeah, it's down, it's down, uh-huh. sort of near there. past Elgin and stuff <laughs> in Central yeah. Texas. Yeah, and and so we yeah we were so we were um, booked for that. And it's like well that's in three weeks. And can we get you ready? So she worked really hard, and her very first show she ever played, she never even met anyone else in the band. <laughs> Got onto one of the one of the main stages there at the Congress Band Hall, and said, "Oh, by the way, everyone, this is Adelaide, your new violin player. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and again, everything worked out perfectly, and and really she's been out with me ever since. So and she's outlasted, <laughs> yeah, she's outlasted everyone just about." You know, yeah. can can you know concurrently mm-hmm. outlasted you know, anyone else? You know, at three mm-hmm. plus years. So, now, Lisa, so. Uh, let me ask you that same question. How do you go about climbing into that lyric? Well, mine is um, a lot of them. I make up the harmony myself, so I have to create the harmony. So I have to listen. I listen to the song, memorize the song, main main lyrics, and how they go, main line, how it goes, and then I start feeling. And I just hear that harmony, and mm-hmm. and it's one of my favorite things is is that harmony, living in that cacophony of sound. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite things, and uh, that is what gets me into it. Is feeling that when we link together and make that sound that holds it in yeah. that that yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a pocket. Bar. It's yeah, a that pocket. pocket. Yeah, yeah exactly. of just sound, and that's my favorite part, and that gets me into it more because it gives me goosebumps yeah. just singing something oh, yeah. like that. When yeah. you know. so, you know, and, and I know I'm speaking for Richard here as a songwriter, as an artist who, who's been on stage and played a lot. It's so nice to have those harmonies with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just it's, it's like an extension of your music. You know, well, I, I depend on her when we're playing. Well, yeah. Harmony, that that's the thing, and you you nailed it. You listen and you hear the harmony. And that's a gift because mm-hmm. not all singers can do that. Right. That's very, in it, fact, um, most of them can't really do yeah, it. Yeah, we, well. we've had a couple singers that they they flat out say, "I can sing the main line," and uh, you, that's you it. go and do yeah. your thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, actually, no, yeah. And, and the thing that I Sounds found like very impressive <laughs> about your harmonies is that not only can you do low harmony, you can do high as well. Mm-hmm. So you're a real versatile versatile harmony singer. I am. I uh, uh, I didn't get into. I've been in, in band. Uh, started in sixth grade and went through high school, played flute, piccolo. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, I moved up to Colorado for about four years, my junior year of high school. And I didn't have, uh, here, they have so many requirements to graduate. Uh-huh. Up there, they're like, oh, you don't need this course, you don't need this course. You Smoke a joint and sick back. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's just fill it, fill it. What do you got? You yeah. got art, you got pottery. Right through town with the windows down there, throw a diploma in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had three choir classes I was taking at one point in time. Because oh, wow. I just had to fill my schedule. And uh, I was started as an alto, and then in another uh band the bel canto singing choir i was a, a, a second soprano so my range is uh for uh, first tenor 
to a second soprano. I have. <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> I can go pretty low. Wow, I that's get, cool. I can get up there sometime. Yeah, so let me let me go a different direction here too. And this is another question for the ladies. Do you write? No. Huh? Do you write? <laughs> songs. Write your, your songs of our own yeah. or parts? Individually. No, do you do you create your own music? So Not as, regularly. Uh, aside from acoustic. No. Although I do recall a time in middle school when I was writing music. I was writing, um, yeah, I was reading books <clears throat> and I had come across various poems. And whenever I found these poems, I would sort of like start to sing it and then I would think to myself, what other, what other parts would go along with this? And then I'd pull out pull up this program. It was called Muse Score, and I'd write out the notes oh, that no, I no, no. that I discovered, and then pick out parts that sounded right with it as well. And and I I did create a couple actually Celtic songs in middle school for my viola. But now you're not writing. I want to encourage both you ladies to write because you both got songs in you. Yep. Uh, I can I tell am you not, that. I'm uh, not talented in creative ways. <laughs> You know, uh, I'm not creatively no. talented at all. No, you've have, got stories. Have you ever? Oh, I have stories. With writers. There you go. You just need to write them write down. Them. Write down thoughts and ideas. Take those stories to Richard. Write mm -hmm. poetry. <laughs> Start writing poetry. <laughs> because that's what, I mean, that's where I was. I was writing poetry and short stories. I did it as a kid and just kind of continued from time to time. When I met Randy, I had just started going towards taking my poetry and rewriting it in kind of a song format to where it mm -hmm. could be sung. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got, if you enjoy poetry and you can write it and everything else, perfect. If you have I got life no. stories to tell, <laughs> I do have life story, yeah. there you go. <laughs> and I'll tell you, writing is the best therapy in the world. Getting it and, out. And, my, and, my and, I, and, and, and my, Adelaide, too. My senior class. You in particular, <laughs> I, I sense in you that you have the ability to really write because you have the ability to feel. And all you do is describe in what you're feeling. In mm -hmm. the same way that you hear a great songwriter, he'll, he'll describe everything in the room that he's mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. That's part of the song. Yeah. Describe mm -hmm. in the same way what you feel. That's a very because interesting got, way of putting it. You've got it. touching. You've got. Because you're talking you've got about feelings. taking imagery. Yes. And translating that to your feelings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you they're in you. And I think it would be really cool. Like I'm sure you guys get together and practice every now and then. Mm -hmm. When we get a maybe chance. one practice instead of actually playing, sit down and, and brainstorm ideas, ideas and start writing Thoughts. together. You'll be but, amazed at because, what you can do. Because this guy can write. He's written oh, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of songs. So the thing is, if he can write, all, you may spawn an idea in him that from a female... I, mean, I know, it, Well, from a female perspective, yeah. too. There's just so, there's, there's great songs out there. We need more girl there. songs. <laughs> By the way, just to let you all know, that the first three shows in our fall schedule will all be females. So all right, girl power. Back in August. <laughs> Sorry, Richard. We love you anyway. <laughs> Richard ain't mad in this. Richard, event. if you would, can you let our listening audience know where they can get your music? Yeah, uh, everything's. Uh, well, you can go to acoustland dot com. There you go. And get uh, that's the we have a regular dot com a c o u s t a l y n dot com, and everything's movable from there you know you can go anywhere from there okay. but uh, click on music it goes to a, a uh, what is it um you click on music it goes yeah, to well, all the different what's that site it's Bandcamp. 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 there's yeah. a Bandcamp. 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 nation and your your calendar of, of the events yeah before oh, right. you click on listen y'all need to go see these guys Absolutely. first of all always go support live music second support the troubadours of the world that are making this stuff up <laughs> and it's a you yeah know, i think please. it's um is it, is it, is it very Bandcamp? important I, I think it's another. Site. Is it Reverb Nation? Yeah. No, Reverb Nation Reverb? just plays and stuff. Okay, they don't so really it's sell it. Be anyway, sells it. But you, you can get yeah. the. You, can you get click get on the music and it goes CDs. to the site. It's just like we we go on so many different sites, but where you can get you can get the music there. Though. Perfect. You know, yeah. Every kind of music. Well, well, I encourage whatever. everybody to do that, and uh, we hope to see you again and uh, do a show. I think that uh, everybody would love you as much as we do, and. Uh, Thank you again for coming all the way up here from Austin today. Sure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Yeah.
Glad to be here. Thanks again, guys. Lisa, Adelaide. Yes. <laughs> Ray, right so right this time. Just, all you gotta do is slap me around a little bit. <laughs> Ellen, thank you, Jean, Barbara, Reno, uh, all the all the people here. David, always here, is such a big help getting. Yeah, thank you everyone who um, is involved. Yeah, in and all the, all the all the people Adam. here and on Facebook and around the world that listen to what we do. The hundred thousand or so listeners a month that go to the website, we love you and we appreciate you. And you're in the music room.